Hello and welcome to Stretford Paddock. My name is Joe, that is Jordan, and this is Stretford Paddock Live. No Jay tonight, because you know where he is, actually? He's in Italy, isn't he? He's in space. He's in Italy. He's actually in space. He's in space. You know, We're going to find some hair. You go up. <laughs> I'm not sorry, it's good. Right, you stand, good in that st you stand where he stood, and then you take the important the part is hair. stood. It's he, past tense. <laughs> no, here's the thing with Jay. He's not dead. He's in space. Dead. You know when you take off on the plane, you go up into space, then you fly and then you come back down. He's in space. No, he's not. He's in the air. He's flying back from, I think... Bergamo, was Bergamo. it? Bergamo. Yeah, which in is right near... Italian. Yeah, right near... Um, uh, somewhere in Italy. Italy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, Jay's in space. Uh, so, we've got loads <laughs> of stories to go through today. Mar uh, the Kanji one is the big one, isn't it? It is the big That's one. That's the big yeah. one. Uh, Kanji, basically, it looks as though there's a genuine interest here. A genuine contract offer has pr uh, supposedly been made, and it's... Um, being linked by a very reliable source. So we'll be getting yeah. into that in a little bit. Manuel Akanji there, the 26-year-old centre-back from Borussia Dortmund. We'll also be looking at Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, there's been a few stories about him trying to get the tactics changed at Manchester United. That's an interesting one. He wants some more help, doesn't he? He wants a bit more help up there. Yeah, exactly. We'll get into that in a bit. Yeah, Ismail Assar is another person who United have been linked with. There's a bit of a story on why he didn't join Manchester United in the summer. And Dean Henderson wants out as well. There's also a bit of a Declan Rice and Harry Kane story. But let's start... Um, with what is the prevailing story in the world rather than just in football. Yeah. So it's obviously um, pretty big news. Um, and that is uh, following, obviously, uh, what's going on in uh, Russia and Ukraine at the moment. Uh, Aeroflot, one of United's biggest sponsors, I think, is the, a sponsor that we've had for like nine years or something yeah. ridiculous. We've been linked yeah. with for a long time. Will be banned in the UK following the conflict in Ukraine. Um, again, that's kind of the news, really. Not much more on it. The, the United's current deal with them runs till 2023 and rumours apparently that um, Richard Arnold has said that we don't want to renew that after that time, but you know, and obviously you can't necessarily just cut ties with the company. But they are yeah. owned 51% by the the Russian government, so it's not as though it's like a private company. They are basically the state, yeah. uh, you know, airline. So does that surprise you that we're, that you know, not that they've been banned, but that United aren't going to sever those ties? They're just going to kind of well, we'll wait till the end of the contract and see where things are in it two years' time. It does surprise me a bit because we've seen uh, Saint Petersburg Zenit. Mm. The football club from the capital of um, no, not the capital from yeah. Russia. Yeah, cutting ties with Gazprom mm. fully. They've just took them off the sponsors. The Schalke, immediate wasn't it? effect. Was it Schalke? Both? I thought I thought it was in it. Was it Schalke? It might be Schalke actually. Yeah, they've cut ties immediately. Yeah. so they're not involved anymore. So why yeah. don't Manchester United, for the sake of eight million pounds a season, which is what it's supposedly worth, the actual deal? Yeah, just cut the tie because you don't want to be involved with anything in this this massive yeah. ongoing thing that yeah. just is just getting worse and worse. Yeah, to me, it's one of those things where you just think, just get rid of it. Like, oh, we, 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 we won't renew it. Well, they might not renew it anyway. Exactly. It's not like it's you know a, a long term deal here. Like we have to do five more years, ten more years. I know we've been with them for nine years, but to me. With what's going on at the moment, I would just cut the ties as quickly as legally possible. Obviously, no. there are contracts there that need to be upheld, but you know, to me, it's just a, a no-brainer. Um, on that, again, the next point um, is the Champions League final, which was set to be moved tomorrow. So currently, um, supposed to be in St. Petersburg, um, and it looks as though UEFA and FIFA will be. Well, I think it's UEFA, isn't it? Will be chatting tomorrow and changing it. No real rumours where to. R Wembley was mentioned. Wembley was one. Yeah. But then there's a the whole thing of that's the same weekend as the playoffs and then they would have to move that around, get 100,000 people in extra in that weekend. It's a bit of a difficult one for Wembley to do, isn't it? it Old Trafford would be. be good, though, wouldn't Old it? Old Trafford would be fantastic. No real but, mention of that. No, but Wembley's always going to get tossed in the app when any sort of final in any sort of competition is going to get yeah. changed for whatever reason. Wembley's always the first out who gets thrown in because it's... Yeah. it's, it's they just say yes to everything, venue. don't they? Yeah, they, they just say it to go, oh, yeah, Wembley will get it. Yeah. A couple more clicks, I think. Yeah, um, it makes again. It makes sense that it's being moved. We couldn't really support going there at the moment. I mean, to be fair, the, the whole reason every final, every venue, every this, every World Cup, every that, it's, it's all corruption anyway. So it, it, in a way, it actually does surprise me that they're moving it. But it doesn't seem like a particularly hospitable place to be going at the moment. Obviously, so it makes sense for them to change it. Interesting to see where it goes. Um, mm -hmm. Will United even be involved? Probably not, but after the draw last night, there's a chance. So, there is a chance. Of yeah. course, there's a chance. Do you think we've got a chance against the Champions of League course. finals? Oh. Going to the Do you final, not think we have? Every team's got a chance. Of course they have. Yeah. But we can't be focused on that in a minute because we've got encouragement going into the second game against Atletico mm. because of that boy Elanga. Mm. I mean, Rhythm, it is a dancer. It is, after it all. It is. Yeah. That's, a good point. You know, That's a good point. It is, it is a dancer. Yeah. Rhythm is a dancer. We have got a chance. 
Yeah. We have got a chance. So where would you like to see it? If, if, if it had to be somewhere else, obviously it's not going to be St. Petersburg, presumably nowhere in Russia, yeah. presumably obviously nowhere in Ukraine either, I would have yeah. thought. Where, where, where are you thinking? Uh, Anywhere probably, you'd like to go? Probably the Bet, C, uh, Bet 365 Stadium Stoke. Oh, it's a good one, isn't it? Stock on Trent. Formerly the Britannia. The, it's the epitome of you want to be yeah. at this stadium. Screw the San yeah, do you know what? How good would it be? Screw yes. the Santiago Bernabeu. Put it in Stoke. I like that. Put it on a, like a grassroots pitch. Yeah. Fuck that. We don't need all, this, all the fans there. Put it in Altrincham. Yeah. So the league pitches in Altrincham. Put it on there. Like That'd be a massive shot to all the sponsors, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. I can't get any money because it's in Altrincham. I need to get sponsor boards down mm. on a plane to Altrincham. They've, been nope. they've had it too easy for too long, these footballers. Absolutely. Champions League final, get it held in workshop. Retford, Gainsborough. Hume. Yeah? Hume. One of these places. Fuck all this like, oh, the Allianz Arena where the outside glows all different colours. Oh, I've got LED lights on my stadium. Yeah. Grow up. Yeah, exactly. We nick, we nick dust caps at ours. I know. That's what we want, somewhere We've like that. We've got rotting pieces on top of the stadium. Yeah. If that's not vintage Barclays. Yeah. Yeah, if you, don't want to be, if you don't want to be doing it surrounded by asbestos, you don't really love football. No, you don't. Get down to the Tigers' tree. ground. You're not a tree fan. Exactly. Uh, Akash uh, Solomon says, don't mean to be pessimistic, but Kanji had, uh, had a lot of mistakes for Dortmund. Kind of reminds me of an early era United Johnny Evans. Interesting, that. That is interesting, because a couple of seasons ago, Everybody would take Johnny Evans back at the That's club, considering we're having centre half options. That's so be hasty with your Johnny Evans criticism there, yeah. because he was a great servant. I won't, and I won't. He's a good player. He's a good player, Johnny Evans. Uh, and we'll get to a Kenji in a bit. I've, I've been looking online. A lot of sort of Dortmund fans. A lot of opinion on Johnny Evans is out there. Um, uh, not Johnny Evans on the Kenji. <laughs> From the Dortmund, Dortmund fans, fans chatting about Johnny. Love, Do you know what? I've Irish noticed fella. this by the way. I had a blood test today, right? Yeah. I can't speak properly since I've had that blood test. Really? I don't know if it's because the amount of blood they took out. How much did you take out? Two or three liters. Two or three litres, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of litres, mate. No, just a few little vials, but ever since then, I've sort of struggled with my words a little bit. Is that bit. why you kept farting off camera? Because today, right, the rips, you're talking about asbestos, it's deadlier than that. Some of the stuff coming out yeah, of it over there is years. absolutely this ridiculous. Honestly, yeah. horrible. I don't know how me or Callum have survived. Yeah, you say that, but you got on your table, on the table through there, on your hands and knees, and did four farts Fake in news. a row. Fake news. Fig Newtons, you just said. Okay, let's move on then uh, to Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo floated the idea of playing two up top during a meeting with Ralph Ragnick yes, after did. the Southampton draw. Uh, discussion on tactics included senior players, but Ronaldo was the most vocal. He spoke out. He was going, do you know how um, I never touch the ball and I can't really get involved in games? Yes, we do know that, Cristiano. It's quite frustrating, actually. Well, I was thinking if you just put another player near me, they could maybe do some of the work and then they'd give me the ball at the last second. I'll tap in and see. Yeah. What do you make of this, trying to sort of change formation, change tactics? To me, genuinely, I don't think it's a problem. I think he's a player who is, you know, seeing a team that at that time was going through a difficult patch. Yeah. We still are a little yeah. bit, but yeah. we've picked up a little bit since the Southampton game. Um, I just sort of think he will be thinking, what can we do better? How can make my life easier? How can we score more goals? Like, I don't think it's really this big drama like, oh, Ronaldo's come in and tried to boss his way around. He's trying to tell Ragnick what to do. He's just a player. There was sat in, it says there, uh, there were a lot of senior players there and Ronaldo spoke most. So it's not like it's like, boss, can I come in? You need to start pointing someone up next to me because I'm getting yeah. pissed off. It's literally a meeting with some players. You know, any ideas? Yeah, I think, you know, what about a 4 2 2 or whatever, 4 4 2. I don't think it's particularly a problem. What do you make of it? I just think he wants help. Yeah. Because I think. It was in black and white against Atletico. He didn't get a sniff. He was probably one of the worst players on the pitch, yeah. which was surprising because there was all as well. the hype post uh, pre-match about how Ronnie's going to do him again for the third time and all this, all the attacks he scored against etc. Second et leg, et Second leg. It's still, it's still got time yet, but I think he still wants help up front. Yeah. Of course he does because nobody's really feeding him the ball. The occasion I think sort of got to most of the players yesterday. Mm. Which is it felt like he did it straight from it the did, start. Yeah, I mean, like Bruno and that. Look, Bruno look was, was the main the, sort of, already. He was the main sort of catalyst for that comment, I think. Yeah. Because he was, he said, really ran like a headless chicken, I thought at times. And we're going on to Bruno now, but I don't think it should be that massive of a problem because anyone's going <coughs> to ask for help if they need it up front. It's mm. just the fact that if Cristiano Ronaldo asks for help, there's three headlines in half an hour yeah, saying yeah, yeah. about how he's ruining the culture of the club by wanting more for himself because he's all about himself, he's all about nobody else. 
do me a favour. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I do, yeah, I don't think it's a problem. Let us know in the comments if you think it's a problem or if you think it's sort of just, like you said, it's two or three headlines being written about a sort of non-story just because Cristiano Ronaldo's name is involved. Um, for anyone who isn't aware tonight, um, Wolves are playing Arsenal and Arsenal are winning 2-1. Oh, they, they get, were, they yeah, they got two goals. Um, it's the 96th minute now. Um, but Arsenal are winning 2-1 there. They scored two late goals, which is frustrating because they can go ahead of Man United by about four points. So um, difficult, or just annoying to see really, isn't it? In other, in other news, Barcelona beating Napoli 4-1 um, and Rangers are 2-0 with Dortmund. So they're 6-4 they ahead now. Oh, 6-4. 6-4 ahead on aggregate. Uh, but yeah, two goals, uh, Lacazette scores in the 95th minute there to give Arsenal the win over Wolves, which is very annoying for Manchester United fans uh. across the world. Um, before we move on, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, Manchester United in the FA Youth Cup. Just a quick update in case anyone didn't see. They threw to the semi-final after a 2-1 win against Leicester. Uh, Ralph Rennick was spotted at the game um, with Paul Mitchell, wasn't he? Yeah. Former, was it head scout at Tottenham? Current? Head scout at Tottenham, current at Monaco. Mm. One of those sort of genius whiz kid types, isn't he? Yeah, not, everyone and talks not before about you think, it's not Paul Mitchell from EastEnders. If there is a Mitchell called Paul Mitchell. Phil Mitchell. It's Phil Mitchell and there's another Mitchill, but Phil he's probably Mitchell, got a cousin Mitchell, who's going to get Billy written Mitchell. in after watching this going, mm. we'll get Paul Mitchell in. Yeah, he's a little scout of a fo local football team. He plays for, what is it called, Welford or whatever its name is. <laughs> Where is it that EastEnders is set? I don't know. He's a lot somewhere in London. I'm not somewhere on the Thames, isn't it? It's a fake, it's it's a fake place. It's the Thames. Welford. Because that's on that's on, that's on, that's on, that's on the Thames, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, Paul Mitchell, who uh, Stephen Alson's one of the people who thinks basically he was the genius at Tottenham, not Poch. Do you know what I mean? Like he got all the transfers sorted. Yeah, but Steve uh, Alson don't want Poch, does he? That's true. He he, he couldn't be more. He's looking against for data Poch, against yeah. Poch. It's the uh, whole Luke Shaw facade, even though I do agree with him now. Yeah. I do, because he's he's been pants all season. But you know what Steve's like with, with It's uh, Walford. Is it Walford? That feels Walford, right. Welford, Walford. Telford. Uh, and what it was gone actually, by the way, scored both the goals. It was. One so. of them was a free kick as well. And yeah. a winner. Pff, some free player in. And a winner, mate. Yeah. Some player what in. What could you want? Um, before we carry on, let's talk a little bit about tonight's sponsor, which Ooh. is Spitch. Well, I see that. I've yeah. camera that. It's a free fantasy football game available to everyone in the UK and Ireland over the age of 18. It's really good, actually. It's a fantasy football game where you get to build your own team, you can play against your mates, you collect points, and you battle it out against loads of people. Just do what you want on it. What? <sighs> Three points. All those three things. All those yeah. three things. You play for free and you compete against loads of different people for a chance to win 70 grand a week. That's more than like a candy's being offered. Yeah. More than footballers a um, week, that. Yeah, so this, this weekend, for instance, right, if you're going on your Spitch app, um, you've got Southampton, Norwich, maybe, not the best one, maybe, Leeds, Tottenham. Now you're talking. Ooh. Will Tottenham lose again? Two teams in are the Are you going to risk putting Harry Kane in? Yes, he's in form, but Tottenham are shit in the bed They've lost minute. four out of the last five. Exactly. Leeds have just been thumped Awful. by Liverpool, thumped by us. Yeah, that's where you've got to put your footy manager's brain in there. Are you a football manager? Do you know Spitch? Do you, do you know play I mean? football manager? If yeah. you do, this is for you. Yeah, exactly. Spitch is the best fantasy football app going, mate. Absolutely fantastic. And it's, and it's not just uh, the Premier League as well. It's the Championship. It's the Bundesliga. You can bet on the EFL Cup final this weekend. Chelsea versus oh, Liverpool. It's tasty, that, isn't it? It is, but I don't want either of to win. Yeah, I guess Chelsea. We'll, we'll, we'll put neutrals. some Chelsea players in there. Uh, but there's also, if you think you know who's going to win, you think you're good at sorting out who's going to play well, who's going to play badly, Spitch is the app for you. The link is in the description. Click the link in the description. Be ready for this weekend's fixtures. You can sign up without card details, which is big that as well, easy. and get playing for free straight away. It's open, like I said, to everyone in the UK and Ireland over the age of 18. And make sure you're checking the terms and conditions. Link in the description. Check it out. It's a fantasy football app. It's excellent. It's easy. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's that easy. Right, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about Manuel. the main event. Manuel Akanji. Manuel. Mate. Yeah. Now let me just let me just. No, I'm, asking, this... I'm asking you. Oh yeah, I'm good. Manuel. Thank you. How are you? Good. Man. A bit gassy, are you? You don't know how to burp. Tell us about that quickly. No, I, don't, I don't know how. You got to thirty burp. seconds. Yeah, I don't know how to burp. Um, I can burp when it just comes out randomly, but on demand, if you ask me to burp, I can't do so it. So for instance, this. You can't so do that. Showing off now. Showing off. Right. Come on. What, what, that's what weird is that this? you can't burp though, what isn't is it? This? I met someone that couldn't He's... have hangovers once. It... Yeah, but that's a superpower. This yeah. is a hindrance because I'm walking around yeah, looking like a, a pregnant a person because I can't disability. belch. I've got to wait four hours till it goes all the way down and comes out the other side. Mm. Which side? Front or back? Have you heard... Front would be very impressive, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, actually. <laughs> um, Callum with Scary. a note on the screen that says, I also can't burp on command. On, you know. Wait. Right. All you lot who can't burp on demand, get in the comments. Yeah, where my non-burpers at? Where my non-verbal burbles? <laughs> 
<laughs> where we at? Yeah? Where my non-verbals at? Change the title this video to non-verbal burbles, yeah. please. I can't believe Arsenal fucking won. That's pissed me off, actually. Right. Let's talk about Manuel Akanji. This is our main story tonight. And I'm just, so you, obviously you've got the graphic here. I'm going to look at my laptop because I'm reading. There's a lot of information here. There is, This yeah. to me feels like there's a lot of smoke and potentially some fire with this one. So this is coming from Patrick Berger uh, of, of Build um, in Germany. Very reliable journalist. We've had him on the channel before. Yeah, been on before. Uh, he knows yeah. his stuff, certainly in, in Germany. And he said, Man United are pushing hard to sign uh, Manuel Akanji and have made the Borussia Dortmund defender a contract offer. He's got 18 months left on his current deal, but Dortmund's attempts to renew his contract have been unsuccessful. Uh, the 26-year-old wants in excess of 10 million quid a year. Uh, to stay at the Westfall Stadion. Uh, it's claimed that United have uh, offered Kanji a four-year deal worth around 15 million uh, euros per season, which you've worked out is roughly... About 60 grand a week. 60 grand a week, less than you can earn playing Spitch. Um, 60 grand a week as they ramp up their efforts to lure the centre-half to Old Trafford. Sport Build is claiming that United are lining up a deal worth 30 million euros, again 25 million quid, to try to tempt the player to Old Trafford. Loads of places running with this, it's in the Express, Metro, Team Top, but it's all coming from um, uh, Patrick Berger, who is um, a, a very reliable journalist. Um, yeah. So the fact that it's in the Express, to me, is of less note than the original source on this one. Um, yeah, Patrick Berger, United are pushing to sign Manuel Akanji, as already reported. The Swiss defender, who has rejected a Dortmund offer, is a United fan and dreams of playing in the Premier League. According to Build, Red Devils have made a concrete offer now. Four-year contract, 15 million salary, price tag 30 million, both euros. Give me your thoughts on him. Give me your thoughts on the validity of this um, approach and your just your general concerns or uh, praises for, for this move because it's not one that's been met with sort of round praise, is it? No, because he's had his injury problems and he's not that centre-half signing that would, I think, get us off the ground thinking, oh my God, what, a, what an absolute stud coming to Old Trafford, going to sort out a defence like that. I don't really see why we'd go for another bit part centre half because mm. I don't he's not he's not a level of your Varans. Mm. No one's a level of Varan at Old Trafford at the minute, but the the move does make sense because if you remember a few weeks ago, Borussia Dortmund confirmed that they've landed Nicolas Sula from Bayern Munich on yeah. a pre contract at the end of the season. Yeah. Which means they've already got a centre half coming in. Mm -hmm. They've not been talking about how they're going to lose a centre half. So that may already be in their heads about Akanji doesn't look like he wants to stay here. He's yep. not shown enough in training or whatever the reason could be for him bringing Sula in. Or he's turned down a contract offer. Or he's turned down a contract offer. They're obviously not want, uh, offered him enough that he wants. Yeah, can, on that, we're just can, I just, money. can I just stop you a second? Your calculations before that got you to 60 grand a week, can you talk me through those, please? And I hate to be a teacher about this. Yeah. But, Jordan, if you could just come to the front of the class, please. Um, Jordan, tell me how you got to 60 grand a week from uh, 12 million a year, please. What? Well, I looked at the um, the change from euros to pounds, mm -hmm. and 15 million euros was Back equated to around 12 and a half million, and a half million pounds. Mm -hmm. So he's been offered a four-year contract mm -hmm. by Manchester United, according to the reports. Right. So splitting that over four seasons, it's about 3.15 million a season. Broke down over a year is about 60, 61,000. Can anyone weeks. at home see the mistake Jordan's made here? The 15 million is a salary. It is per year. It's 15 million a year. That's according to Patrick Berger. Four year a contract, year? 15 million salaries. And uh, uh, does salary mean per year for sure? Because 60 grand a week sounds good and more likely. Yeah. But if that's in a uh, per year, that's 240 grand a week. Surely a bit, we're not for paying a that. Bit part centre half. Surely not. Are you dumb? John Murto, sausage. That's mad, isn't it? That if can't that's be right. true. Hopefully that's over the full four years, because because obviously I know that in Germany these these tend to spend less money on players. But what what would that make him be on now though? What, Sixty grand plus twenty five million to Dortmund for that. Think about it. Our top earners, Ronnie. I think he's on four eighty. Mm. De Gea is on three fifty. So you're going to tell me they'll bring a Kanji in from Dortmund who was struggling against Rangers from the Scottish bleeding Premiership. Shh. Yeah. For 200 and... That surely is, it's not it's right. Surely not that. Surely, surely not. I mean, if it is 250 that. grand a week, that is madness. Because I know, I think that's like what Varane's on. Surely we're not paying this guy who's, you know, a decent player, but, you know, I'll, I'll get into it in a minute, but about someone who's been very much up and down over the past few seasons, who isn't, you know, one of the best players at Dortmund, surely we're not paying him 250 grand a week. Hopefully, like you assumed, 
that two hundred that uh, fifteen million euros is over the four year yeah. overall because that would make a lot. I more would sense. pray to God that it is. Yeah, because I know a lot of players. What was it? Harry Kane at Tottenham was on like sixty grand a week two or three years ago, wasn't he? Do you remember when he was? He'd, yeah. he'd, he'd won the, the Premier League Golden Boot t- twice and he was still on sixty grand it's a week. More to do with Levy though. I'll leave it is, but I'm it. saying it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility for a Kanji no. to currently be on like forty grand a week, no. and we're boosting his. Uh, thing the Daily Express is saying that it is two hundred and forty grand a week. If it's that, 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 that that's fee absolutely is per, per season. That's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. It's a mammoth wage a week when they're still going to pay Dortmund twenty five million because it's not like he's in the last six months of his contract and he can just negotiate with anybody. Yeah. This guy's still on a contract. Yeah. He's just rejecting contract offers. If they're offering him two forty k a week, we're absolutely mudded because they've mad. made mistakes before. That is mad. Yeah, Alexis Sanchez, but he had he had a bleeding. An aura when he was at Arsenal, yeah. he was best player at the club for three years. So yeah, they paid him stupid money. It didn't work out. All right, fair enough. And we got him on a free. We got him on a free. So which we m- saved probably 30, 40 million on the transfer. Which made thing. it, which made more sense to give him it. Yeah. Weekly to tempt him. And it still Trafford. didn't make sense, but I, it made more sense than this would. Oh, of course. Because I think two hundred fifty grand a week that puts him up there only with like obviously Ronaldo, De Gea, and Pogba. Bruno. I don't think Bruno's even on that much. I don't think I think he's on 150 and he's waiting to get another contract extension, isn't he? Oh, is, like that puts him as one of the top sort of half a dozen earners at the whole club. Um, and you know, there's a few. This is the thing. There's a few different comments. I think the the general feeling with the Kanji is he's a very talented player, someone that has been slightly up and down this season. Weirdly, in Dortmund's worst season in years. Um, or say worst season in years defensively statistically yeah. they've not been very good this season because um, I know last year they were pretty poor until the end of the year weren't they but um, poor again this season he's been one of their sort of top two or three performers but obviously they're conceding loads of goals so you know how good you know it's like when Daley Blind was at United he looked good but we conceded all the yeah. time so is he actually that good or is he just unfortunately playing in a, in, a, in a poor team it's difficult to say but for a player that hasn't really won much his only, what was it, Basel and, and Dortmund are his only sort of recognised team. Yeah, because we can't really pronounce know, we, we don't know the other team. Pronounce the other team. It's some, like yes. Winterfell. And then that's not a problem. Yeah, and that's not a problem that he's not played, he's only played for Dortmund. Obviously, they're a good team, but 240 grand a week it seems to be a lot of money. My question to you is on this, and to people at home as well, the, the, the one point that makes me sort of flicker with, with doubt on this deal, the, again, Berger, great source. Yeah. The one thing that makes me doubt this is where it says he's a Man United fan and dreams of the Premier League. Do you think there's a chance that this deal is being put through or forced by him rather than Man United? Do you think the, the bulk of the interest could be coming from him and he's sort of going, I'd love to play for Man United, and his agent's going, leave it with me? Or do you think that you know it is just a natural thing, United have approached them and he happens to be a United fan? Because we've seen this before where players want to join United and you hear all these rumours and the deal's close and the contract is on the table and it turns out actually he just wanted to join United and we didn't want him. Well, look at the spine of the story. He rejected Dortmund because they weren't offering him enough money. Yeah. Manchester United have money <clears> coming out of their arse. Yeah. Right? And we certainly despite... spend it like we have anyway. Oh, absolutely. After a bleeding curry. Yeah. But he's going to go to United, supposedly, and get a fat wage. Yeah. If it's according to that and it's 240, tell him that he's been a United fan all his life. Tell him yeah. that he came out of the womb wearing a United shirt. Tell him whatever. Yeah. Because he's going to do anything to get that move, knowing the bag that he could earn at Old Trafford. Because mm. you know how stupid we are with money, some of the mistakes we've made in the past. Yeah. You can't be offering someone of that calibre who scored three goals for Borussia Dortmund in his entire career, that amount of money. And I know he's a centre-half, you don't judge yeah. centre-half off goals. But he'll fit right in, because yeah. he obviously doesn't score a lot, which yeah, we don't good, score off corners. He'll be good at not scoring so, from corners, like the rest of the team. You're just getting him in now. Offer, yeah. offer him a million a week. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a very interesting one, and one that, by the, you know, if, if the deal, or if the rumours are to be believed... Um, and like I said, there's a lot of detail on this. Usually, me and Jay stand here, and Jay always makes a point of, you know those stories where it's like, sources suggest that United could be interested in monitoring the £25 million rated player if Atletico don't make the Champions League. Do you know what I mean? It's like so many it's caveats so and clauses. It's so and, safe, yeah. isn't it? That Whereas this is like... makes an article. Like, here's how much money he wants. Here's how much United have offered him. Here's the, you know, 15 million per season, 30 million pound deal. He's, he, he wants the 8.3 million a year yeah. from, from Dortmund. They're not giving it to him. Like, there's a lot of detail in this. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. But with a player like him that isn't the biggest draw in the world, he's not the most famous player, 
to waste your time on a story of this nature, of this size, to put this much detail in, wouldn't make sense from a sort of no. journalistic tabloid, let's sell some newspapers perspective. So the fact that he's a smaller player and there's all this detail, I think there is something to this personally. And it's probably something that we'll, we'll be covering over the next few months because obviously the transfer window doesn't even open for another February, April, March, April, May, June, July, five months. Another point you have to remember though, Joe, is think about all the rumours about how we're going to have a massive clear out at the end of the season. Mm. Loads of centre-halves leaving. Eric Bayer supposedly don't want to be here because he's not playing. Yeah. Of course, he's complained to Ragnick and he had complained to Solskjaer before, mm -hmm. before he got sacked. Phil Jones obviously rejected yeah. the Bordeaux move. What, to just earn another another 60 grand a week just sitting on his ass And the rest. And the rest of it. Yeah. So you're already losing two centre outs. And Axel Tanzebi could well be Axel, on his Of way course, out. he's on loan at Napoli. He yeah. doesn't look like he's going to get a sniff at, in the first team. So you're losing three centre outs in the yeah. first team there. They could just be pre prepping for squad depth next season. And if they are, then mm. he's a good squad player. We're all sat here going £240,000 a week, supposedly, mm. for a squad player. Yeah. What's going on? Well, What's Manky, going on? Manky here is a great point. He said, "This is defo agent talk. Link him to United, and he'll be talked about a lot." I, that wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him. I, 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 it's just one of those where I think, I think there is genuine talk behind the scenes. Whether it's true, whether it means he's coming or not, this doesn't feel like it's been totally made up. Like some of the sources, like the amount of times we get linked with a player just before or just after we've played yeah. against them, like John McGinn, or we saw it um, linking. There was even like Jao Felix articles coming out today, where it's like you're just writing that because we played against him, and it'll get you more clicks on your next Atletico preview in a couple of weeks' time. So this one seems to me that either it's true and we want him, or his agent has gone to the press and said. Man United won him. You should honestly, you should hear the offer they've given us. So I think there's something going on here, and obviously we'll be covering all of that. And as if we it's go bloody on. agent talk, yeah. If yeah. it's agent talk, and Patrick Berger's just tweeted that for a couple of clicks and a couple yeah. of retweets and whatever, you can have son Sh of a gun. Shame on eh? you. <clears throat> right, let's move on. Speaking of absolute bullshit, Gleason Bremer. You like this one, don't you? <laughs> Man United ready scouting. Uh, we're on a, right, we're, right, here we go. This is great. <laughs> look at that for a look at that for a title. If I wish Jay was here, not because not, not that I wish you weren't. I just love to no, keep the mic on. I didn't mean it like that. No, I meant I wish Jay was here just to see this headline. I'd love to see Jay's reaction to this. Is that just destroying everyone's ears, by the way? I'd love to see Jay's reaction to that headline. I don't think we've ever seen this before, ladies and gentlemen. This is a Stratford Paddock live first. Sometimes United, we've, we've seen United prepare deal. We've seen United scout player Ooh. in in with preparation for a, for a bid, right? Ooh. What we have never seen in the history of this show is United prepare to scout someone. <laughs> we aren't even looking at him yet, but w my <laughs> God, are we prepared to have a look if this guy's any good? And if that isn't a sign we're going to fucking sign him up, Ooh. I don't know what is. We're sat there going. You know what we should do? What? We should probably start scouting Gleason Bremer. That's how good he is. We haven't even started scouting him yet. This is nonsense, isn't it? We're probably having these conversations about we need to prepare to scout him. You go to B&Q, John. Yeah. Get the best binoculars you can see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because yeah? okay. we're going to be prepared. We're not going to look through him. We're not going to no. take a label off in case we don't scout him. No. But we're well prepared. We're prepared. If we need to scout him, we can. We've got, we've got the facilities. Yeah. We've got the binoculars. We've, we've got, got the money. We've got the database. They've got like a little database with yeah. all the stats on it. We've got, Transfer we've got Twitter. Marked. Transfer marked, yeah, exactly. If we need to scout him, we are more than prepared to scout him. Yeah, they nonsense. are the most prepared. Prepared? Oh, prepared. Sean's had a go. He said they don't sell binoculars at B&Q. Surely <laughs> they sell binoculars at B&Q. Yeah. Surely. I don't think they do. <clears throat> Surely they do. Someone link a link in the comments to binoculars at B&Q because I want this confirmed. Yeah. Sack the preparing to confirm the link. Yeah. Find it. Because I'm adamant that B&Q sell binoculars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Gleason Bremer. All right, centre half, isn't he? Yeah, he's very good. <laughs> uh, Ver Veritas says, I just joined. Why are we excited? Are we signing a guy who we're absolutely not linked to? Yes. Um, yeah, this one is absolute nonsense. And he's right there. Um, Ishmael Asar, then let's move on. Uh, but preparing to scout is a new line. I'm going to tell Jay about that. He'll lose his head next time I see him. Um, Ishmael Asar. Uh, in the summer United uh, of 2020, United mm -hmm. were very much linked with Ishmael Asar, weren't we? And here's why it didn't happen. It says, yeah, amid frustrations over the pursuit of Jadon Sancho, uh, United 
did start to look and explore, that's another one, explore a move for Ishmael Assar. According one. to his agent, the deal eventually broke down over clauses that Watford insisted upon. At the last moment, they offered a loan without an option, which, which Watford didn't accept because the loan was expected to be accompanied by an option with a right of first refusal for Manchester United. So basically, it sounds like they wanted us to have an option to yeah. buy him. Um, and we didn't want that. We just wanted to have him for a little bit to pass the time until we got Jaden Sancho. And he yeah. thought, fuck that, I want to be worth more than that. And I believe he's still at Watford, isn't he? He is. I think he's got 5 and, fif five and 15 or 5 and 18 this year, I think. Yeah. He's, been a, he's been okay. He'd be a good squad player, I think. But obviously he wants more. You don't want to be playing bit parts mm. Jaden Sancho because you're not going to get in the team because that kid is absolute gravy. He's flying at the He's minute, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I love that he's doing that as well, Jaden Sancho. He's looking very good. We've just got a note here. It's a very upsetting note for Jordan. It says they I'm do not sell binoculars at B&Q. How do you feel about that? I'm sick of this. Yeah. I want to uh, change that into a big pint of red wine. Big pint of red wine and just drown your sorrows. Drink um, sorry to Veritas Experience, who I, uh, who I quoted before. Uh, they've just commented again saying, uh, I called them Veritas, they've just commented again saying, Joe, can you please call me Mr. Experience? Not Veritas, thank you. We are not friends until you prepare to scout me. I am prepared to scout you. But also, Mr. imagine Experience. your nickname being Mr. Experience. Is there anything sexier than that? Oh. They call me, well, the ladies call me Mr. Experience, but you can call me Veritas. Mr. Experience, what kind of experience? Oh, so high in here all of a oh. sudden. Turn Jesus, I need to this off. For Mr. Hell. Experience, imagine. We'll do it all. It'll just open up a realm of possibility yeah. that you've you never didn't even, even know it was possible. experienced before. Jesus. Uh, Santa Notch uh, says, go to Astrofest, Jordan. Plenty of mega binoculars in there. Astrofest? Don't know what that is. It sounds like a festival, and I'd, I'd like to go An to An AstroTurf like festival. That's the sort of place Stephen Housen hangs out, isn't it? No. We're going to get me garden AstroTurfed. It's going to be fucking I'll nice. play off the park six minutes. Me hamstring! Um, for anyone who's clocked the jumper, by the way, this is our Fernandez Fire. range. Yeah, do you uh, like this that This is pun? from paddockmerch.com. Yeah. So is this? Yeah, that so is. So this is well. No longer for sale, that one. There's a limited not? edition one, yeah, unfortunately. You can't oh. get that one anymore, but you can still get this. We've also got loads of new merch coming very soon. Check out paddockmerch.com. You also get 10% off if you are a member. So hit the join button. You'll get discount merch. You get access to our members-only chat. You also get behind-the-scenes videos, as you can see there. That one was Rio Ferdinand. We've got another members vlog coming out, actually, uh, before the weekend. It's Jay's trip in Madrid. So if you want to see all the details, all the fun that Jay was having on his little trip to Atletico Madrid, uh, you can check that out in the member section. Click the join button. Loads of stuff going on there all the time. And like I said, access to the chat and discount on merch as well. Click the button. The BTS stuff is banging. Please give him a sec. He has had a fantastic tea. I've had two pizzas what and some curly you have? fries. Two pizzas and curly fries. On yeah. these pizzas, you're talking Last... jalapeno, you're talking pepperoni, you're talking red onion. Do this know... guy knows Italy. Do... Oh, speaking of <laughs> Italy, Italy, you're going, aren't you? Yeah, let's not talk about that. Right, <laughs> Dean Henderson. <laughs> United goalkeeper will leave the club in the summer, according to Fabrizio Romano. It could be a loan. It could be permanently. He said uh, that the 24-year-old will be leaving Old Trafford in the summer. His future is under serious question marks. Romano believes the summer will see the 24-year-old leave Old Trafford. He said, Dean Henderson will leave the club in the summer. Roughly how many times have I said that Dean Henderson is going to leave Man United in the last 30 seconds? About seven. Yeah. Uh, maybe on loan, but maybe uh, but to have some opportunities to play. So it could be a permanent move, could be a loan. Will you be sad to see the back of Jordan Anderson, uh, Dean Anderson? Not Jordan Anderson. <laughs> Dean Anderson. Sad. I've said that so many times. Would you be sad to see the back of Dean Henderson should he leave in the summer? No, not really. No, because he's never really had that chance, has he? Yeah, they had a good run of games when they were going to Solskjaer when De Gea had COVID and he was yeah. struggling last season. He was tipped that he could be taking Pickford's role mm. in England mm -hmm. for the number one spot. But when De Gea's come back in, he's been in absolute scintillating yeah. form. I can't see Henderson getting a sniff at mm. United. And there was all this talk about, why is Tommy Eaton coming? We've already got Henderson, we've got Lee Grant. All these keepers, for what reason? Obviously, that was the reason. Mm. Henderson's obviously had some sort of whispers and sniffles about how he's not happy because mm. he's not playing. He's 24. He yeah. had two great seasons at Sheffield United. Yeah. So he's not going to, want to sit there and sit on the bench. It's, it's the most obvious departure, I think, yeah. from the club. Obvious departure since sliced bread. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. The problem, I feel bad, actually. And I don't not mean as in, like, I've done something wrong. But I feel yeah. a little bit bad for him. I think he's a very good goalkeeper. He's got loads of potential, loads of talent. You look at what Ramsdale's done 
Um, he went to Sheffield United after Henderson, impressed, but you know wasn't as well, you know, as a resounding success as Henderson was. And yet he's gone on to Arsenal, obviously fighting for top four. They won tonight, big big uh, win for them. He's regarded as a, you know, not quite as good as he was at the start of the season, but one of the better keepers in the mm. league, sort of top ten keepers in the league. And Dean Henderson sat on the bench. And I feel a little bit bad for him because by the, the rumours that have come out over the last sort of six to eight months, a lot of that is down to the fact that he got pretty bad COVID in the summer. Yeah. Um, so, he, you know, he sat he there. Struggled, didn't he? Basically, he ended the season as United's, I wouldn't say number one choice, but uh, league goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, obviously, De Gea playing in the Europa League. Presumably would have started this season as the number one because De Gea's form had been awful. Then the season starts, Henderson's not available to play, hasn't had a pre-season, De Gea comes in and is back to his best. Yes, we're lucky as United fans to have De Gea back to his best, mm -hmm. but I think it's literally a case of you don't catch COVID in the summer, you are probably Man United's number one now, which is insane because De Gea, you know, no one would have assumed De Gea would come back the way he has after basically three years in the doldrums. And then now Dean Henderson's looking to leave Manchester United. So I do feel slightly bad for him. It's just the way the cookie crumbles with football, isn't it? It's just the sort of look that can you know, have a player leave a squad, have a player join a squad. We've seen similar things with Martial um, in the past, or you know, uh, at Rashford, sorry, getting his chance after multiple people were injured. You come yeah. into the team, you show yourself and, you, and you, you, know, you stay in the team. It's almost like De Gea's done that. Henderson got, gets injured, De Gea comes in, is, is world-class again, and Dean Henderson's leaving. It's, it almost seems inconceivable when 12, years ago, 12 months ago, you'd be looking at Henderson saying, he'll be our first choice for the next 10 years. Now, he's probably leaving, so I do feel a little bit bad for him. Uh, Phil Mershon with the Super Chat says, De Gea is in great form, is a myth. Always been a good <coughs> stopper, distribution and positioning is terrible. Not chucking it in his own net anymore, sure, uh, but not mm. sure Hendo's the guy, but I still feel we could do better elsewhere. Um, yeah, I think... The fact that he's in great form is in comparison to the last three years yeah. when he was chucking it in the back of his own net. Yeah, mistake after mistake after mistake. And we were all calling for his head, fair enough. But yeah. he did knuckle down, he carried on. And yet it probably, in the sense that it's unlucky for Dean Henderson, it was very, very lucky for De Gea that he, he simply wasn't going to put Lee Grant in or Tom no. Eaton. De Gea's gone in and he's literally got back to his best all but his distribution because we saw it time and time again, including last night. The amount of loose balls that he just ping out for throw-ins or he wouldn't find the yeah. man that's the one thing he has to improve on massively I, don't know if it, I mean he's, he's replaceable he is yeah replaceable. he is replaceable I think and 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 if obviously there's the taint of, of Liverpool and City that you won't be able to get off them but if someone of the calibre and style of Alisson or Edison became available I would swap De Gea for that for a goalie of that style and calibre do you know what I mean and oh, the ability nice. to play out from the back yeah. like I think De Gea still still has his weaknesses. Um, don't forget, it's all it's that that comment is all to do with the recruitment. Yeah. Because City signed a relatively unknown Edison from Benfica. Yeah. Liverpool signed. Spent a lot Allison. of money on him still though. It was only like forty odd or forty five. Yeah. They signed Liverpool signed Allison from yeah, Roma. Roma. You know, not like a, oh my god, what what, what a signing. Mm. Now it's up to our scouts and specifically John Murto. If they're going to go out, they're going to have to do what Liverpool have done so well. It's not spend stupid amounts of money, yeah. even though the whole Akanji story that we just spoke about is a prime example of how there's still the same mistakes that are happening at a football club, if it's true. Because it might not be true. That's true. Could still be true. That is true. But if you're going to go out and go and sign a keeper, mm -hmm. do your research. Yeah, definitely. Um, right, let's move on then. Harry Kane and Declan Rice. This story is coming from 442, which again... There's a lot of apparently's in this one. Man United are apparently confident they could sign both Kane and Rice this summer with a period of change on the way, including the expected arrival of a new manager. Hold on, no, you, United you, are ready to spend big. What? You've not read that right? Hold on. Manchester United are apparently confident. Apparently, they apparently could apparently sign oh, both. Yes, sir, apparently, yeah. Harry Kane and apparently and Declan apparently, Rice. Apparently, this Declan summer. Rice, apparently. Um, the reason I've included this one is because the, the Kane stuff is pretty new, but the Rice stuff has been going on for a long time it's and just, as we it, sort of understand this, it, it as it were, United are very much interested in Declan Rice mm -hmm. and he is one of United's main targets this season. Um, certainly as of um, the January transfer window around that time, yeah, Declan Rice definitely um, is a, a big target for Man United. I think the Kane thing has sort of come up in, in the wake of his performance against City. People are talking about is he you know, one of the Premier League's best ever strikers? Is he back to his best after one game and they've lost again straight away afterwards? They were killing him for his form. Kane. They were killing him his form all season. Yeah. He's been pants for the majority of the season and now as soon as he gets, what was it, one or two goals against City, two, yeah. everyone's all talking, oh, best striker in the league by a country mile. Yeah. And I'm not doubting his quality, but everyone, 99% of fans mm. and pundits, 
were slating him yeah. for, for, for misfiring all season. Well, now, they're, desperate, as... they're desperate for him oh. to be the main man again because they love him. The English media love Harry Kane. Obviously, he's got us to a World Cup semi-final, a Euros final. I know he didn't score that many goals, but he was the talisman of those teams, the captain of those teams. Like, it makes sense that the, the media love him. But because they love him, it clouds their judgment on what has been a shocking season for him. He has one good game against City, and all of a sudden, this is the £150 million he's striker we've Poch. been waiting for. He's coming to United when we get Poch. Like... That stuff of, you know, it's starting to look like a 150 million quid player. What, because he had one good game against the team that wanted to sign him, so he's obviously always going to have a good game against them. Just ridiculous stuff. The Kane stuff, I'm not sure on. The Rice stuff, whether we get him or not, I think we're in for a big um, Rice battle this, uh, this summer because United definitely want him. We're definitely interested in him. Yeah. Would you have him? Do you like him? Oh, would I have him? Yeah. I, I... Do you, do you want to be a comedian in a future past, in a future or a past life? In a future past. Because um, it's the multiverse. I, I always look at the Declan Rice rumours and I look. He's got United as an mm. option. He's got Chelsea as an option. Yeah. I'm pretty sure once the availability becomes more concrete, whether Declan, uh, whether David Moyes will be like, okay, you can let him go mm. for this amount, X amount, supposedly between 80 and 140 million. Right. Mm -hmm. City coming. Mm. Definitely, because the Fernandinho's leaving at end of the season, guaranteed. You're Declan Rice looking at Manchester United, mm -hmm. who, aren't guaranteed, who aren't guaranteed success. No. Chelsea was his boiled club, but they yeah. let him go, so he could he could still have a bit of bad blood towards mm -hmm. him. But his best mate plays for him, Mason Mount. Manchester City, mm. blitzing the league. Well, were blitzing the league, but they're still the favourites for the Champions League. They're an absolute powerhouse. Mm. Does he come to United? Probably I'm not. Trying, not. I'm not trying no, to be that's, pessimistic, but, that's, but I'm no. looking at it at a, at a real... A yeah, real realistically, fake we aren't the best of those options on the pitch. But the, the but it's worth remembering that we have beaten those teams two players in recent seasons. Like we beat, I think we beat Chelsea to Lukaku the first time round, didn't we? We also beat Man City to Fred and to Maguire and to Ronaldo. And, and I know that and Sanchez. And I know they didn't all work out. Or actually, you could argue none of those worked out. Yeah. They were still players that City were concretely interested in, yeah. and we managed to sort of get their player ahead of them. So I do think there's a chance that um, we could beat him, uh, beat them to his signature. He's it's the perfect just, signing. Yeah. He's the absolute perfect signing. On the, on the bottom of the midfield three, you're thinking Pogba as an eight, yeah. Bruno bombing box to box. Rice is that insurance that would literally make our midfield pretty much mm. not unbeatable because that's 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 a very big statement. Mm. More, it takes more us to solid. an excellent midfield. Although yeah. the problem is Pogba's leaving, so who are we going to replace him with? There's another question uh, for another time, perhaps. But, yeah, is Declan Pogba Rice. Pogba Do you think he might stay? It's a slimmer of hope. A slimmer. A, a slimmer. a slimmer of hope. <laughs> uh, right, that's going to be all from us. Thank you again to Spitch for sponsoring the show. If you haven't checked them out, click the link in the description. It's a really good fantasy football app, so give them a go. As you can see, there. Live football manager. It's fantastic stuff there from Spitch. Thank you very much for sponsoring the show. If you want a member, like I said before, click the join button, click the subscribe button. Thank you, Jordan, for coming on. I wouldn't say you've you've replaced Jay, but you've certainly filled his shoes admirably. Admirably. How have you felt tonight? What size of shoes is he? Four and a half. Oh, I'm struggling then. Mm. Sorry, you won't see me again on chance. Yours are way smaller than that, aren't yeah, they? You've like, got little feet like, like a like, like a, a cabbage two. patch kid. They're like a two. They're a two. Yeah. Uh, where can people find you? George Simpson. <laughs> two underscores. On Instagram. George Simpson with two Twitter. underscores yeah. on Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you check him out as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Like I said, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We will be back tomorrow with The Brew, with the preview for the Watford game and with the news as well. Jay back in the country, back in the bay. Back on your screens. Back on your We've screens. We've missed him, haven't we? We've, We've missed, missed him. We've missed Jay. It's only been gone two days. I know. See you in a bit. <laughs>